our viewers? We're going to find out today in Let's Play Axiom Verge. All shall be real. You will remember that previously we used a sequence break to go to the left side of Eden, uh, fought through the boss, boss, and got the drone over. And now we are going to take the right side of Eden, which we intended to explore first. Now, down here, there's another bit of garble that we cannot uh, trench to from yet. We'll have to come back later. What you are intended to do if you're not sequence breaking is to come over this way first. That will give you a tool to clear out the scary garble. Then you can go back through, fight Uku, and get the drone teleport. It's not a terribly major sequence break for our purposes. Now you'll notice there's a bunch of stuff down here that we can't really get through. You can barely see in the bottom right there there's a chamber. We'll have to find another way around to there. Uh, those little green worms, those don't do anything. They're just decoration. Ghouls, however, do things. I forgot ghouls were a thing. There are several of those along this walkway. I don't think there's a great way of avoiding them. You can kill for them out of the way. Now, down here, you can see some chambers, but it takes a little experimentation to find the right place to drill. What you need to do, get through there, and then have to be kind of pixel perfect to teleport through this wall here. For some reason, it's hard for me to get this one to work. Uh, I'll edit a lot of this out and cut in when I actually get this to trigger properly. There it is. Okay, having done that, you then trench coat through there. Then, let's see, where is it? I believe you need the drone to drill from here and come around. And this is not the way. This is. And you don't need the drone teleport to come through here, so you could get it immediately following the proper sequence. And it's another range node. Not terribly relevant to me. That's not really what I wanted to do. Okay. Now, over here, this is the other entrance to Indy that we saw earlier that we couldn't get to. I'll briefly wander down here. There's a note there. What does this one say? Another Rusalki note written in their language. And this one concerns Athetos, who was in some way helped by Katrahaska to get here and release a plague. Uh. Whoever wrote this apparently tricked Pathetos into believing she was dead. Most likely, this was probably Elsa Nova, but maybe Ophelia, I don't know. But they don't want him to escape. Which is interesting, because I don't believe anything the Rusalki themselves have told us can suggests they were pursuing Athetos to Sudra from somewhere else and trying to prevent him from, es from escaping. They just imply to Trace that they want to punish him for releasing a plague and killing everyone in Sudra. But this note does not make it sound like that was their primary objective. So, I don't know. In any case, if I check the map now, you will see that we have fully mapped and gotten items from Indy. So, that's good. So, I'll go back into Eden now, finish up with that.
more garble that we can't get through. Now, these are... Uh, what does the wiki call them? Adult giant green worms. They are the mature version of the little green worms we see. When you hack them, they become able to break through um, blocks vulnerable to enemy hack damage like that. And in this case, there is an item over here that we can get by allowing them to do that. It's a note probably written by Athetos' followers and an intellectual-sounding axiom. Uh, it's an interesting one, and I believe the game trailers actually feature this text heavily. Basically what they're arguing, and this is, again, some of the philosophical stuff that Thomas Happ wrote before he developed Axiom Verge, the idea that, one, an algorithm exists whether or not something is executing, and in any instance of that algorithm is basically equivalent. Uh, cognition, consciousness, is a type of algorithm that perceives the algorithm that executes it. Uh, meaning, among other things, that an algorithm is never going to perceive its own demise, as an earlier note allu alluded to. And the further idea here is that any algorithm that gives rise to consciousness will be perceived as reality by that consciousness. In other words, a virtual reality is indistinguishable from reality by anything that exists in that virtual reality. Not terribly relevant to the plot of the game, as much as you might think, but this is actually from Trace's academic paper that led him to becoming known as Athetos in his own memories. Whatever that means. So we've got another one of these big things. And what does the wiki call these terrifying things? Are these glow bats or are the other ones glow bats? There's one that's fireflies and one that's glow bats, and they're both horrible. But whichever one this is, you hack them and they start acting like the other glowy divey one, which is not really an improvement. So don't. Speaking of which, there's one right up there. Let's kill it. Got it. Now, what's up here? You can jump on these little steam mat things. They help you make these jumps if you don't want to do drone teleporting. Or if you can't because you haven't gotten that item yet. And everything in here wants to kill you, and I should probably use the kill room. Now, that thing right there, that is a carnivorous silk pupa, according to the wiki. There are only those two of them in the entire game. There's another place where that tile is used that we haven't seen yet, but you can't hack it there. You have to do it here. Uh, I think that was originally planned to be an enemy type that would do stuff when you approach it, but... It doesn't. When you hack it, though, it starts behaving like an actual carnivorous silk bug. So there's really no reason to hack it other than getting the achievement. So with that done, let's move on. Now that we've been thoroughly killed by those terrifying things in here. Ah, speaking of which, now I do want to hack the worms over there because they are going to be the passage we care about. Got at least one there. Yeah, what I want to do is come through there eventually. I think I can do this. I'm careful. There's a note here of some kind I didn't see with the glowing on it. It's an Athetos note, and it describes another command, reveal Vaikia, which apparently is the Rusalki language. So I'm going to enter that shortly here. 
and that will save me from having to edit videos for every one of the Rusalki notes anymore. I can spell properly. I yeah. Come on. H Y A done. And if I did that correctly, I should be able to come in and see some of these uh, Rusalki notes translated. Yes, excellent. That'll leave it turned off for the most part. Also, I can get rid of these just to make some room. I don't need them anymore. Okay, let's see if I can get through the rest of this room without getting myself killed. Is there a save point up there that I can get to first? Pretty soon. Yeah, I won't worry about it for now. Uh, what I do want to do, however, you can see the corner of that thing there. And actually drone up here. I think you can get up here without using the infinite height trick somehow, but I'm not immediately sure how. But anyway, you come up here, you get a health node fragment. Hooray! Let's see if I can get some health from the green worms. Oh, I got the health node fragment. Good. Alright. In here, there are more of these worms. I just need one hack, so I'll clear the others out of, out of the way. And when that one gets up there, you'll see it start breaking through the ceiling. distortion field, which is kind of a neat effect. It's basically a killver that stays active when you hold down the button, and it might actually be a viable replacement for the killver, so on this playthrough I'm going to try it. I'll hotkey that to my killver button. We'll see how it works. It does less damage per tick than the killver, certainly, but it does multiple ticks fairly quickly while you hold it down. So, save point, what's over here now? Music cuts out, must be boss time again. I see the red door. Nothing over there. So, what do we have to fight this time? Uh, boss time? Anything? Well, whatever these things are. Too much. Can't go that way. And what? Lovely. So Athetos makes clones of himself. Including us and his soldiers including all the mutated soldiers we've been fighting as bosses all along. Trace is disturbed, understandably. Now, there's an achievement. If you don't shoot at the clone there, just let it take damage over time, it eventually dies on its own. But you get an achievement for being merciful and not manually killing it. I'm not certain if letting something slowly die is better than just shooting it, or more merciful, but I don't know. There is an achievement, and that's how you'd get it. 
So let's have it out with the Rusalki. Interesting that Elsa Nova redirects to Ophelia there. I'm not sure why she does that. But... Ophelia acknowledges shamelessly that indeed Trace is a Thetos. Or a clone thereof. Or not a clone thereof. A younger version of a Thetos, so... Time travel? Is that what we're doing? He used a rebirth chamber. The egg, yes. So basically what they're saying here is that many years ago, Trace came to Sudra somehow, used one of those save points, those rebirth chambers, his biodata or whatever, his pattern in Star Trek terminology was saved in the transporter. And the Rusalki used that data to create a duplicate of a Thetos at that time. Trace is correct, though. He should have just stepped out of it without any memory loss or anything. Meaning, either the data fell apart over time, or the Rusalki intentionally modified his memory to make him more malleable, or something. Trace dodges the question. Good job. Trace now wants to talk to Athetos, as originally planned, I guess, but... The Rusalki want to kill him, and they're going to make him do so, somehow. By killing him. And that is why the achievement is to only die once, because there is a death that is mandatory by the plot here. It is, however, possible to complete the game not dying at all, because by using the trench coat to get through the garble guarding the Uku area, you can bypass this sequence entirely. Meaning you can bypass this scene and bypass the death and complete the game with no deaths at all. For which there is no achievement. So, not only can Elsa Nova inject us with stuff at any time, she can also kill us at any time. Lovely. By using the nanogates that were injected in us to make us more controllable. Great. But, fair compromise, according to Ophelia, we won't kill Athedos, we'll just shut down the breach attractor. And Ophelia will promise that they really won't kill him after all. I'm sure Elsa Nova will come around. Nothing can go wrong with this plan. But their plan succeeds. They now have an easily controllable version of Athedos that can use his tools. Great. So there's nothing over here. These are not actually real save points, by the way. They just happen to look a lot like them. Now those laser gates are out of the way. We can drop down here. And what's this? Well, that's all garbly. There are some scary things in the background. Those are the Rusalki's bodies. And they're massive and powerful, and I'm sure we'll never have to fight them in those bodies. How about we don't do that? Oh, but the repair drones will do it anyway. Great. Note here that Ophelia says that Rusalki is a word in Elsa Nova's language, not our language, implying that Ophelia and Elsa Nova do not share a language. And that is pretty much the main reason for thinking that Ophelia is the outsider referred to by that sequence of notes.
I'm sure no one will ever have to go one-on-one -on -one against the Rusalki's robot bodies, though. But down here, we get the address bomb. And this is basically the way we get through the scary garble. I'll demonstrate in a moment, because you will see on the top left we now have bomb ammo. And we can run out of that, and it'll be a pain to get it back. So first I'm gonna come over here. Get through all these things. That's what the bomb ammo drops look like, by the way. And the bomb does that. It's dramatic, it clears that stuff out, and also hacks all enemies within some range. It's not quite the entire area, because you'll see that's not cleared out. It's not all that amazing. And as I said earlier, if you lab coat through, you actually do not need that to complete the game. Now, this over here is the way we could have come from Kur earlier, you'll see on the map that uh, top exit there would have led through into Eden. So you could have seen this side of Eden much earlier in the game, but there's nothing you could have done here, and those things are really dangerous, and I think the impact of coming into Eden is a lot better when you come through the proper way, so I skipped it. That is not actually a carnivorous silk pupa, by the way. For some reason, that's just part of the background tiles. Now I'm gonna do some mapping here with the drone thingy. I need to go up a couple more. Do it properly. Duh. And there's a ledge up above there if I can get around the garble. that out the way we're supposed to. Yeah, there is a platform up there you can use if you don't have the drone teleport yet. Let's see, I need to map that little spot there. That's that area mapped. And then I ride this thing up to this area. You'd be forgiven for thinking this is like a territory. That long flat surface. So, happily that recharges our data bombs a little bit. Or address bombs. If I can manage to face the right direction. But we come over here. And you might think you need to drill a complicated path up here somewhere, but you don't. Just come through that wall. And let's see if we can get the wisps out of the way. And over here, for that joke boss fight, we get both a power node and a health node. Hooray! Now I'm going to meet you back in that large area that I came into Eden in, because there's one more item over there. Okay, so I'm over here on the left side of that room with the Rusalki bodies. There's some more garble to clear over there, no problem. And that brings me back over here, where there's yet more garble. If you ran out of data bombs, that would be kind of a pain. Unfortunately, I didn't. Okay, and now I'm back towards the center of the open area here. And there's this bit of garble that I saw earlier that I can now get through using the address bomb. And that lets me through over here, where I get what looks like another weapon. This is the shards. It basically, rapid fire sprays ice shards like that. I don't know of any particular use for it, but 
Maybe it's useful in some situation I'm not aware of. Let's try it against these ghouls. Any good? Ah, uh, no more ghouls. Oh well. Alright. So, we will continue this next time and see what we can get now that we have the drone teleport. Thank you for watching, and good night.